Lord, buddy, and if you're curious, before I begin my report, what the heck was that song? No, it was not a song I incorrectly played. Ask anybody who knows the group Slipknot, play that clip for them, and they'll be able to tell you, okay? There we go. All right, let's talk about my 2014 college previews. We're resuming, this time with the Iowa Hawkeyes. There's a clue right there for you. All right. Last year, when the Hawkeyes started off their season with a loss to Northern Illinois, a lot of people might be thinking, uh-oh, here we go again. Iowa could have another losing campaign, could be another long year for Kurt Ferentz and that squad. But no, Iowa was resilient, and they ended up winning eight of their next 11. Closed out the year with a win at Nebraska, and they played tough against LSU in the Outback Bowl, only losing to a four- and five-star talented team like the LSU Tigers, only by one touchdown. So they played respectable, did Iowa. Entering this year, coming off an 8-5 and five season, a four-win improvement from the year before, Iowa returns plenty of ground attack, including Mark Wiseman, who had nearly 1,000 yards rushing a year ago for Iowa. You also returned in the backfield Jordan Kanziri, and by the way, at least six other running backs who are on scholarship, so no shortage of running backs there. The quarterback returns to and uh, Jake uh, Rudock, who I thought did fantastic, considering the fact that this is a, a predominant running team. The stat's not bad. 2,300 yards passing through the air and also to 18 TDs. couple of areas of opportunities, though. Cut down the interceptions, had 13. That's way too many. And he's got to get the uh, completion percentage up, completed 59%. Um, it will help, though, to return uh, Cabante Martin Manley, a speedster. And by the way, Manley will also be returning kicks, punts. Um, Manley had two uh, punt returns for touchdowns a year ago, both against uh, Western Michigan. So, you know, he could take it to the house. The addition, by the way, of Derek Woolies will help Iowa. He redshirted a year ago, so he gets to taste a little college football this time. Six feet, four inches tall. That should be a tall target right there for um, uh, Rudolph to throw to. Offensive line-wise, huge reason why I thought Iowa improved that offense. Um, and by the way, you returned three of them. The best one of the bunch, a guy that could have gone pro if he decided to leave early, and he would have been a high pick. That's Brandon Scherf. Decided to come back one more year. He's at the left tackle. Right guard returns to Jordan Walsh along with the center. Just like the offensive line, the defensive line was very productive in 2013. Three of those guys come back. And by the way, before we continue, the Hawkeyes last year defensively, how about this? Top 20 in the country when it came to rushing defense. Top 10 in the country when it came to scoring defense and passing defense. They were terrific. Uh, defensive line-wise, three of them come back. Um, that includes Drew Ott and Carl Davis. They're expecting them to be even better than they were last year, and they were good a year ago. But the linebacking core is going to be brand new, and that's really trouble because Iowa, how good were they at linebacker? Each of the three linebackers from last year, get this, had over 100 tackles each, and the linebackers combined, by the way, for um, over 11 sacks. So you're going to miss that production. So the new guys, Quentin Alston, Travis Perry, Reggie Spearman, must step to the plate. And by the way, your leading returning tackler this year is the uh, strong safety, John Lottermilk, and you return the corner in Desmond King. The other uh, two secondary positions are going to be uh, new as far as a starting lineup. The punter returns, but the kicker must be replaced. And we already mentioned the uh, punt returner is back and Manley, who also plays receiver. Schedule-wise, for the Hawkeyes, amongst the teams who qualified for a bowl game a year ago, and that was over 70, Iowa has to have the easiest schedule of the bunch, okay? This schedule is tailor-made, and we're going to explain why. September, Northern Iowa, Ball State, Iowa State, all at home. Those are the first three games. Those are games that are not going to make you scared, run to the closet, and scream for your mom or dad, okay? It's not. Should be 3-0. The fourth game, a little bit tougher. you got to go to pittsburgh Hinesfield to play the Panthers, and Paul Christie's a good coach. Remember, last year, Pitt... Uh, beat Notre Dame at home. So Iowa uh, cannot take the Panthers lightly. And by the way, Pitt has a, a receiver that caught over 80 passes a year ago, and that guy was just a freshman. So now he's got a year of experience under his belt. Entering October, um, your first three uh, Big Big Ten games, by the way, um, they don't look challenging at all. You're at Purdue, you get a bye week. You host Indiana, you go to Big Ten newcomer Maryland, you get a bye week, okay? 7-0 is possible for Iowa. And then November, five games with no bye week. That's a little bit of a drawback because your bye weeks are done. Northwestern at home. Uh, Northwestern didn't qualify for a bowl game a year ago. At Minnesota, who did win nine games last season, but Minnesota loses a lot. And then you go to Illinois, and Illinois flat out sucks. So you could be 10-0, 9-1 if you play your cards right at the worst. And then that sets you up for the last two games, which are Western Division opponents, 
Reminder that the Big Ten's no longer Meters Leg Legends Division. It's Western and Eastern. They realigned the divisions up a bit. And for the second straight year, because of the realignment, you get Wisconsin at home. That's a big break. And then you get Nebraska six days later at home on November 28th, the day after Turkey Day. And, of course, last year in Lincoln, you annihilated the Huskers. So now you got Nebraska really steamed red. That should be a good game there. Best case scenario, Iowa. I, I, I could see... 11-1, um, that's best case scenario, but I do think that they'll get beat best case, worst case, realistic case, because they will not have been battle tested entering the last two games. They'll have confidence, so I can see a split happening. I can't see them running the table, but I could see them winning the uh, Big Ten Western Division, because remember their schedule is a little easier than uh, Wisconsin's, and it's, it's really easier than Nebraska's. Um, so a Western Division Championship, not a realm of possibility. And remember, in the Big Ten Championship game, it's a one-game ding. And remember, too, we've seen upsets happen in this game, including each of at least the last two seasons. Um, worst case scenario, 7-5, and five, and that would be a big disappointment for this team considering how far they've come. And that would mean losses to those last two opponents, Wisconsin, Nebraska, plus at Pitt, plus Northwestern and Minnesota, which I think still could have the capability of beating Iowa if the Hawkeyes don't come ready to play. Final synopsis, my realistic pick for Iowa. I'm going with 9-3, and three, sharing the Western Championship with both uh, Nebraska and Wisconsin with 6-2 and two records. But I think Wisconsin beats both Nebraska and Iowa and wins the tiebreak. But I think, again, Iowa will go to a good bowl game, but this time they'll have a 9-3 and three overall record and have a shot at a double-digit winning season. And that would be their highest win total in five years. That's my look at Iowa. Another preview coming soon. Thanks, everybody.